Norway, in a nutshell, I'm aware of the misspelling of my own country's name. Remixing is a virtue. Uh, I'm going to hold, uh, give a presentation, uh, and my goal is that everyone here should know very much about uh, OER in Norway in 10 minutes. Um, there are some things uh, with knowledge. It's not just knowing things, but also the questions. And some of the questions are more important than all the facts that I will show you on the slides. Um, and I don't know the answer to those questions. Norway is a small country. It's a strange country. We have no OER policy. Uh, we have very low OER awareness. And we have one of the largest OER success stories uh, worldwide, actually, from Norway. When I'm here, I'm very happy to be here because I'm a very curious person. I really like to learn from all of you. And I'm actually learning a lot from all of you from what we have had earlier today. Uh, and I'm very curious about the context of each nation. We all want to share, change the world to something better. And um, we try to cooperate doing so. But the context is so, so important. So when I learn about Hungary or Slovenia, I really try to ask all those questions so I can learn what's the situation, how is it functioning in your country, so I can give advice and get some advices back. So we're a small country, 5.2 million people. Actually, no, we have two official languages. So every learning material has to be in both official languages at the same time. When we make open digital learning material, they have to be at the, both languages at the same time. Uh, education is free for all, learning materials free for all, except in higher education, but there is subsidized uh, common curriculum, except in higher education. Uh, also, we have no approving regulations regarding learning materials. We used to have that, but we abandoned that, and everybody thinks that's a good idea now. All students in upper secondary education has their own computer, and I think they have had that for the last seven years. Uh, high number also in lower grades. Uh, total annual spending on learning resources is about 70 million euros on learning resources. Uh, and it's a division between who has the responsibility for the learning resources in Norway. It's on a national level, it's a higher education. There you have around 230,000 students. Uh, there are 18 counties, which is responsible for upper secondary school. About 240,000 pupils. There will be a quiz afterwards, by the way. Um, 426 municipalities uh, are, responsible, are responsible for the lower um, and uh, lower secondary and primary education. In higher education, we will find that there is uh, almost none awareness of OER. They don't know what it is. Um, since this is going to be taped, perhaps someone will be angry <laughs> when they see this back home, but this is how I view it anyway. Uh, and also something which I think that you will find in many other countries, the higher institutions, learning institutions, are very autonomous. So they decide what is the right way to do things. Uh, no universities has included OER in their strategies. Most universities has a portal for shared content. Uh, some of this is OER, but they actually don't say they are or we are, or perhaps we don't know. There are some talks about future shared portals for learning material, but they don't mention OER. There are a growing number of MOOCs, and some of them are partly based on OER, and it's a raising awareness about uh, open licensing on uh, publicly funded research. So that's higher education. If you go down, you have the big success story, and I have been Head, for, head of this uh, initiative for 10 years. I'm not the head now, but I'm very proud of this. Um, approximately 60 million euros has been used and invested in open education resources in Norway for the last 10 years. And it's the cooperation between the counties, which is responsible for upper secondary school. And what they do is that they ask teachers all around the country, which are teachers, they have the salary, do you want to contribute? Do you want to work for three years in a virtual organization? You will be where you are, but you will uh, contribute in an editorial staff and make the learning material that you really want to have in your classroom with other teachers that you want to work with, with the vendors that win the tenders. 
20% of the funding that goes into learning material for upper secondary school in Norway goes to open education resources. So right now we have the highest score for quality. Um, we, if we ask, um, well actually we didn't ask, someone else asked, um, where can I find the best quality uh, in online learning material? And uh, the, the learning material that was mentioned most was NDLA. Uh, we have the highest usage and it's still increasing. Like, uh, of course you remember how many pupils there were in Norway, upper secondary school, it's around 200,000, and we have around 400,000, between 400,000 and 500,000 visits each week. Um, and it's growing. We have over so, uh, 80 subjects, um, and we have a lot of teachers contributing, both in, as editorial staffs, but also they uh, contribute in pilot schools, and say, we want changes in this, we want something here. But last but not least, a lot of lot of students make contributions. Right now we are moving from one technical platform to another one, and we are very much dependent on uh, students' inputs on what they want. So 70% of the money that goes into NDLA actually don't go to the um, salaries for the teachers. It goes to uh, the open markets where tenders are won, and a lot of uh, contributors win competitions there. So this is a typical page. This is an English page. This is this is the old design. It's going to be new soon because of input from students. And if you scroll down on on the content, you will find that here's the corresponding licensing, and you can click on those. It's it's a dynamic mashup. So you'll also find that there are some objects with the C on it because. We have struck deals with the um, um, movie industry, so we have Pulp Fiction or Lord of the Rings, um, big blockbusters. So we can't buy them free as open resources, but all the material around it, the theory, um, choruses, they will be open. And everything, uh, you can go there without any logon. Lower secondary primary education, uh, most students there, they're the municipalities. They uh, have uh, no cooperation right now. They're planning. Some of the uh, municipalities are thinking of making an NDLA G. Uh, some of them are thinking about joining together in procurement. And the governments are uh, planning to build a, port, a, pay, a paywall um, and subsidize procurement of closed learning material. This is because of lobbying from publishers. Yes, this is uh, actually my last foil because I was thinking what was the most, it's a very strange situation. We have an enormous success. We have never had a policy. And for us, we have always said that oh, perhaps we don't need a policy. Perhaps it's sustainable as it is. What we feel now it's, no, it's not sustainable. The people that own Sandele, the politicians, they don't know what OER is. So we have kind of piggybacked on ICT education. We have, we have just done it. But the politicians actually don't know what OER is. And for us to grow and for us to sustain, we are absolutely dependent on uh, politicians knowing what OER is. And we need help. And I don't think that that is just typical for crazy little Norway. I think that is, even if you, can you imagine, if you had the NDLA success in your home country and it was not good enough because you have forgot to have a policy with awareness on top. So I think that we need that primarily on the polit political level. We also need it on a strategic level, but NDLA would never have happened if there weren't teachers that really glowed, that really, really wanted to change the world. And we must never forget that. Thank you very much.